Hi and welcome to this week's episode of Tying Traces and this week we'll be looking at a general slide trace for sharks, fishing heavier, fishing heavier steel, bigger hooks and making that stronger. And it's very simple, there's a couple of knots you have to get used to, have to get used to working with steel and uh, it's a very simple trace you can tie, these are the traces you can tie a lot of. Um, and keep them in your bag or in, in your in your extra tackle so that when you go fishing you don't have to sit and tie traces on your fishing trip all right very simple if I tie these traces use a fish mate uh, carbon coated I just prefer I like the carbon coated you get the nylon coated which is more a steel color this is more a black color 150 175 200 250 that's the, the, the breaking strands you'll be using Then on the hooks, I've got three options of hooks. If you're going to fishing, be fishing like a whole mackerel, a smaller bait, or a or a, a whole chocker, this is the hooks I'll be using. It's the New Tuna Circle Mustad. And I actually want to give you guys the reference number because we mix them up. There's there's different ones. This is three double nine four zero Mustad Circle. That's now the new hook. It's much lighter, thinner gauge, but still very strong and very sharp. And that's the new mustard hooks on the market then. And this is the Tenno soy ring that I'll be using with it if you're not going to use just a circle hook. You can make a slide trace with just a circle hook at the bottom and you hook your fish over here which are your, your bait just through the head like that and you secure it with a small cable tie. Or what, what I normally do is just that second guarantee running at 90 degrees I'll have a normal J hook so the head will still go in there as per normal but there'll be a piece of steel with this hook at the bottom that just sticks out on the side and remember what I said in my previous videos is keep it secure so you'll use a toothpick with a bead on top and you'll stick it into the fish keeping this hook nice and secure so it runs basically at the 90 degree this is your carry hook and this is your backup hook to make sure you get a hook up see if if a big fish takes the whole bait in its mouth and it slides out a circle hook basically will get it in its mouth in the corner of its mouth if it misses it you've got still got the second hook to actually secure it then when I'm fishing bigger baits this is the hooks I use it's the catfish the mustard catfish hooks and you get them even bigger to a 12 this is a 10 but already you can see the size difference that's a 10 ring soy and that's the Tenno catfish. So depending again on the size of the bait you're going to use, sometimes you want to slide just a mackerel, other times bonito or a yellow tail, you're going to use the big hook. So let's tie the first trace quickly. With the only the mackerel, I'm going to use 170 tie, 175 pound with a circle hook and the ring soy. And in general, the slide trace I'm using is, is not less than a meter, 1.2, 1.3, up to 1.5. And that just assists in getting the bait out. If you make it too short, um, sometimes battles to go down. And if you make it too long, it battles to go down. Normally, and this is going to sound funny, just before a high tide on a pushing tide, I'm, I'll use a longer one. And that for the simple purpose, it catches catches the underdraft of the water with a pushing tide it sucks so you want to get your bait to the bottom and even drop the tip of the rod through the waves to get it out quicker with a sucking tide that's not necessary you use a normal trace and you just shake it out and it, it will suck out now first things first you have to tie the bottom hook first on these traces before you tie anything and I'm going to use a figure of eight there's several knots you can use and uh, the thing with steel you just need to remember is when you tie a knot you're not going to tie it if you tie it close to the hook here you're going to kink your cable it's not going to be a nice trace so what you want to do is keep the loop nice and big when you tie this trace i do a figure of eight this is my way of doing a figure of eight it's twice around the finger and then towards the hook and then away from the hook again through both loops and it forms 
the figure of eight as you can see there. It's going to do that. Now, again I wet it, grab the tag end, let's do it with pliers. I hardly have teeth left of pulling traces. And there, you don't pull it tight, 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 tight yet. You just pull it nice and firm so it can still shift around on the cable and you can get it down to the hook. Now if you pull it too tight it will also kink your cable. So now with no kink you're going to get it all the way down to the hook and then basically you're going to wrap this around the one end, that around the other end and pull that all the way onto the knot and still, and this takes practice, it had a little kink in the bottom but you pull it tight And then the difficult part. You pull your tag end last on most knots. Now something else I do once this knot's pulled nice and tight is I just secure the knot by wrapping the cable. So I'll take the cable you have to do this very tight so it's, it's quite with a quite a firm grip you'll have to twist this and I'll do it just so that there's three twists around the cable like that and that just secures it then clip that off after I've tied the hook I'll measure my distance Okay, which is normally for me just on that. It's the general trace I use. That's the length. I add obviously a little bit extra for tying the knots of the actual length because you're going to lose a good 10 15 centimeters just by tying the next two knots we're going to do. Now, for the next hook, I use a knotless knot. Some people, and if you want to be safe, you can tie this to the next hook by cutting this off here, tie it onto your hooks eye there and making a new knot going to the top. If you're really going for very big fish and you want more confidence there's nothing wrong in doing that. It will give you that extra bit of security. Now for your knotless knot, the circle hook on the top, that's always your carrying hook. With a circle hook, no bait. It shouldn't be in the bait. It should be in front of the bait, always. And I'm going to position that to 90 degrees. Like I mentioned earlier, you want this hook to stick out 90 degree on the side of your bait and this one's carrying it straight. Right now the knotless knot, very easy. Hold it there, you look at the gap. There's a little gap on your hook obviously and you go to the opposite side of that gap. Get a nice firm grip on the hook. And these hooks are so sharp these days they pierce your hand instantly. I do it about eight times you can choose. Now very importantly especially with a circle hook but most hooks it needs to come from the back so I'm holding it tight in these fingers so it won't pop off because remember it's steel it hasn't uh, built up the memory yet you need to pull this tight now to get the memory but you always go from the back of the hook to the front. You'll lose a lot of fish if you don't that secures your hook up and I'll explain that just now you pull this nice and hard and what I do is I just kink it a little bit to the back there so it holds it for me and that's your knotless knot done okay so basically it's, that's your carrier the circle hook and this is your bottom hook that will stick sideways out of a mackerel now just to explain why I said this needs to come out the front of the hook. If this gets caught up, that secures, you know, the way it pulls it like that, will pull it into the fish's mouth going to you. If it's not, it's going to pull it opposite way. And then your hook up rate goes down drastically. Now that's your slide trace. You can now, if you want, you can add a skirt onto this, you can add a cutter flasher onto this and that you'll do before you tie 
your non-return slide. Um, I use the Kingfisher non-return weighted. Got a little weight on it. It works for me. And over the years in sliding, I found that taking this, I will immediately bend it straight. There. Now let's compare it to the other one. That's our rings to stop. That's your stoppers just above your sinker. So basically that's how that one's bent. Now I'll straighten it up. You can leave that little kink there so that the sinker doesn't, you can even make it worse, that the sinker doesn't go up so easily. And then what I'll do is I bend them there. That's a personal preference thing, but I found that it, uh, it works for me. It slides a bit quicker. So if I compare the two, you'll see the difference. Now that you'll just tie onto your slide trace. And again, remember not to try and make your knot close to your swivel. Make sure you've got space. Then I use the figure of eight. just hooks flying here. Yeah. You don't want hooks lying around everywhere when you do this. It's for demonstration purposes. I take it down. And I pull it as tight as what I can. You can obviously use pliers on this. Hook your hook onto something and you can really pull it tight. But now with this, swivels on. And again, I'll secure it two or three times. And that, you, that little tag, if you do that, what I just did, you want that tag almost non-existent. And I'll tell you why. If you're one of those heavy disco dancer sliders, meaning you shake the hell out of your rod, uh, and you do it irregular, this starts doing that, okay? And if that little tag catches your main line, it's stuck. Then you have to reel out everything, start all over. So make sure that tag there doesn't become one of your problems. All right, if it's just shaking and that tag can't catch your main line when you're sliding, you won't have a problem. So make sure that that's really, really tucked in nicely or even squeeze it a bit. So that there's no way that it can catch it, catch my main line. And that's your slide trace. Now obviously, like I said earlier, you can add a Kuda duster on this. You can add a Yamashita skirt just to give color. You're obviously in your bag, you're going to keep a couple of them um, for different conditions. Dirty water, you don't need the skirts. And for cleaner water, you can use a bit of color or flash around your bait. It does work. I definitely definitely does work and then I just wrap it like this and there's your slide trace now with a catfish the bigger one exactly same principle you'll tie the same trace just using two of these hooks or a bigger circle hook and this at the bottom uh, but this works very nice for dingles as well like I explained in the past it's got this nice little uh, indent in the bottom for your dingle that you can use this as a, a normal dingle hook as well as keeping your bait straight on a slide you can use this as your top hook as well um, but you'll do exactly the same just using 200 pound 250 pound the heavier steel but it will do exactly the same now remember to type questions if you have questions i try my best to answer all of them in the comment box below this video and uh, in future videos, if I don't ask them, answer them in the comment boxes, I'll try and answer them through the videos we do on a weekly basis. But thank you guys for subscribing. Remember, when you subscribe to our page, in the near future, we'll be having some weekly prizes for our subscribers. 
So make sure you subscribe and share this onto your Facebook page. Thanks for joining us.